Good afternoon to our moderators. Uh, what we are doing today is running a uh, remote training session, which will talk to the issues and hardware that you're going to encounter during your moderation uh, at the SVC TechCon. I have Eric May here of Alliance Audiovisual, who has uh, been responsible for the SVC's AV longer than I can remember. Um, we're going to record this. This will be on YouTube, and we'll also be running our traditional in-person uh, Sunday afternoon moderator training session in Long Beach. But this is a way for uh, those of you who will not be able to attend on Sunday to get an overview of uh, what you need to do and what you need to work out. So without uh, any further uh, jabbering from me, let me introduce you to Eric May. And Eric, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Frank. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to do this. So kind of to start us off, I'm going to go over the, the screen that you will have on the computer. Forgive, I've got a Mac here that you're seeing, but it would be it will be a Windows machine. But you'll see a folder on the computer in the session rooms and it'll be it'll be similar to what you're looking at on my screen so you will have the svc provided screen saver and this one is for monday may 2nd um, that'll be the screen saver that we would ask that you start at the end of your sessions it kind of rolls through and shows upcoming events talks about the exhibit hall the run uh vendor stuff just a good idea to start that at the end of the session so that the room isn't just left looking at a folder of files. After that, you have the files for the sessions that day in your room, and they will be labeled with military time so that they'll order themselves chronologically. And all that needs to be done is that you open a presentation, close it, open the next one, and so on and so forth. It should be, it should be all labeled, and Marianne does a great job of making sure those are in there for you. Um, I do think that Frank might have some, some tips on what you ought to be doing to get ready for your session in terms of the presenters and the PowerPoints, and I'll let him speak to that in a moment. But again, as far as the computer goes, you'll have a desktop with an SVC logo on it. There'll be folders there that are appropriate for your session, and inside of there will be your talks, including the screensaver that you would run at the end of your session. So from a PowerPoint standpoint, it shouldn't be any different than what we've done in years past, although it's been a few, but uh, Frank may have some pointers as far as uh, presenters and getting with Mary Ellen. So, so, so thanks, Eric. So, uh, a, a couple things here, folks. Number one, the principal objective is for the speaker and for you as a moderator to have fun. If you have fun, you're going to do a great job of conveying the information uh, to those in attendance. And then I like to suggest a, a, a couple things. One, uh, review your session a little bit in advance. Uh, don't wait till you get to the podium until you start to worry about who will be speaking. Uh, take a minute to try and pronounce uh, the speaker's names uh, ahead of time. Uh, we have uh, an international group of speakers and in some cases the names are not as uh, easy to come off the tongue as as you might expect so it makes the speakers feel a bit at home uh puts them at ease when there's uh when they're being introduced without somebody stumbling across their name uh, the second thing your principal job here is the master of ceremonies uh, we're going to have 20 minute talks, 40 minute talks, and I can assure you that the majority of people will, uh, let's just say, not have the best time management skills. And, and you really need to keep the program on track because we have three sessions running in parallel and people are going to be coming uh, across from uh, other presentation halls to be able to see a presentation. So, your job is to keep an eye on the clock. And when you start to get, or when we start to get uh, close to the end of the time period, um, to kind of get eye contact, uh, don't throw a shoe, uh, but just some way to 
communicate uh, non-verbally to the instructor, or I'm sorry, to the presenter that uh, we're getting a little bit neat, as they'd say in the UK, on time. So make them feel comfortable, pronounce their name, and kind of play the shepherd when it comes to timing. It's your principal role uh, as a moderator. All right. Okay. And thank you, Frank, for that. I'm going to go ahead and stop my share now so I can get on camera, um, make sure I'm large here for the recording and show you guys what uh, we've got as far as technology for the presenters and what you may have to assist with should something come up. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is the, the slide advancer, the clicker, as they call it. We've got the, the big green arrow. That is the forward button. When you press it, it lights up. It lets you know that you press the button. You've got down below that the laser. You've got a green laser on this guy. So You'll be able to use that. They'll be able to use that to show, highlight things on their talks, et cetera. And then you have the little red back arrow. This big green arrow has like braille buttons around it in the, in the shape of a triangle. So if you're holding it in your hand, you don't have to look down. You can feel those buttons and you'll know you're on the correct one to advance your slide. Um, but they'll be on the podiums in the rooms and folks will be able to get accustomed to those uh, when they come up. Pretty straightforward, similar to years past, but again, we have a forward, little back, and then a laser. The second thing that's on the podium, along, well, third thing actually, because we have the computer, is the microphone, the podium microphone. So these are, these are pretty flexible, they can be adjusted, and then they have a button on them that says push, and when you push it, that light lights up. When the light is on, the mic is on. You'll hear it, you can talk into it, and everyone in the room will hear you. When you are not speaking or you don't desire for this to be on, you can press this button. And I'll talk a little bit more about positioning. What you wanna do is you wanna talk from roughly this distance. If you get too much into here, the, the P's are gonna start pop, 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 popping in the room, it becomes harder to understand people. As Frank said, some of the folks are international, may have an accent. We want to advise them to keep, you know, three, three inches or so away, maybe even four, and use that mic like this. On top of the podium mic, we have the lavalier mic. So a lot of the presenters are going to choose to use this. If they are choosing to use this mic, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn off that podium mic. So press that button, turn it off, and then they can use this one to speak. If they have both on, it's not going to be a total disaster, but best practice says one mic only is needed for best audio. So these mics, they have a button on the top. You flip it over and it'll go green. That lets you know that the microphone is on. If you're using that belt clip and you look down at your waist or along the side there, you'll see that green light. That'll also let you know that it's on. You should try to remember to position this with it off. And then turn it on right before you start speaking, just because if you don't, people will hear the mic rustling. Could be distracting if someone else is being introduced while they're positioning the mic. Positioning the mic, it can go, it should go somewhere in this area. It should sit somewhere about there, whether it's a tie, a button-up shirt, a polo shirt even. The clip is should go somewhere in this region. If you get it too high, it won't work very well. And if you end up clipping it like to their shirt and it's hanging this way and they turn their head, we'll lose them. The mic will lose them. So if they can, dead center, down a couple inches is best. Um, not too low because it gets down by your belly button, we'll lose you there as well. So those are the two mics that will be up at the podium along with the clicker and the laptop. So that's pretty much the tech on stage. Uh, we do have one other microphone that I'll show you and then I'll see if Frank has any questions. This is the microphone for the audience. This is pretty much the easiest mic in the room to use, and it just needs to be flipped on, which my technicians will do ahead of the, ahead of the session. If somebody happens to turn it off and they walk up and you, that just means the mic is off, tell them to flip that switch. Uh, they do that, that little screen lights up, and they're good to go. The mic will be on. So these mics are not very sensitive. They do not need to be turned off while people are speaking at the podium. They're fine to just stay on and then do questions. No worries there. They should speak into this mic. You wanna get into it somewhere in this region. If you're this, it's not gonna to work too well. 
Again, it's not as sensitive as the podium or the lavalier. So those are our three microphones that will be in all of the session rooms. And I think that kind of covers the tech as a kind of a 50,000 foot view. We do hope that you'll be able to swing by Sunday if you've got questions that maybe we didn't address here and, and Frank may have some for me. Well, well uh, uh, thanks, Eric. I have two questions. One, um, what happens when there is a meltdown? What, 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 what should the uh, moderator do when uh, something just completely screws up? So that's a good question. We have technicians that are directly outside of the rooms in Long Beach. They're stationed in a chair or just roaming between the rooms there. So if something were really dramatically wrong, there's a good chance they're going to hear it or spot it before you have to go get somebody. But at worst case scenario, they're right outside the door to your session. So you can they'll be easily identified because they'll have already checked in with you prior to the session. And should something go dramatically wrong, we, we can they'll, you'll be able to find them pretty easily. So, so, so I kind of knew the answer to the question before I asked it for Eric. So this is part of the reason why we put a lot of pressure on the speakers to provide their PowerPoint presentations in advance. So they not only get loaded, but tested to make sure that they function. Uh, typically, the issues that arise are when folks show up with, oh, here's my laptop. I like to just somehow integrate it to the AV or here's my memory stick. Can we run the presentation from there? So something really untoward happens, just be calm. Assure the audience that we're going to get through this, and then we just go from the beginning and help will arrive. Uh, second question I have or comment is we will have a number of uh, presentations, probably four to six, where we've had some very last minute uh, uh, cancellations or travel restrictions that will show up as a video. Uh, Eric, can you talk a little bit about uh, how the videos will be handled in the uh, presentation halls? Yes. So where there's a video, we will still name it the same way as the PowerPoint. It will just be a video file instead of a PowerPoint. And Frank is going to get myself and my team a list of those sessions that have those videos. So we'll be able to have a technician in the room ahead of the session to go over it with you and or be there when it's time to run that video just to ensure there's no hiccups. Um, it's, it's literally going to load a video on the computer and we're going to want to go to full screen so that we're watching the, the video in the best quality and, and the largest format we can see on the screen. And we'll make sure that the audio is coming through the PA system as well. So it really shouldn't be too difficult, but we'll obviously touch base with every session that has a video just to make sure that those go off without a hitch. Okay. All right. So again, as we said before, this is just the short overview video for folks that are not able to uh, come to the in-person uh, uh, training session on the Sunday before the TechCon opens. Not like we're going to be covering anything really substantively different, but there you'll see the layout of the podium and the uh, uh, projectors and the screens. So it puts things a little bit more in perspective. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for volunteering your time and energy in helping us make the best possible experience for our presenters and our, for our attendees. And we're looking forward to seeing you all uh, in our first in-person event in hard to believe three years. So Eric, thank you very much for, for spending some time and we'll see everybody uh, uh, a little under four weeks as of the date of the recording. If there are any questions, please direct them directly to me, Frank Zimone at svc.org, and we'll get you the answers. So thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon.